Cave, you mentioned he saw uh, uh, Dai Young and his budgie smugglers in, in Dubai. Goody, uh, things haven't really finished the way he would have liked in, uh, at Wasps, have they? Well, no, there's only one team to blame on it, really. Saracens. Oh, blame Saracens. Blame again. Saracens. My blame Saracens. Me. No, you have to, actually. Um, <laughs> 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 because it, the, the, the reality of it is... What do you mean? Had Saracens not got relegated, and you know, had they not been deducted all the points, and it, Wasps would genuinely be in a relegation battle, they wouldn't have sacked him. Um, I generally believe that's that's what would have happened. Either, you know, I, I think what Wasps have done, and it, it's quite a strong thing for the club to do, to say, actually, do you know what? When you've got someone under contract that you feel, as a board, you need to make a change, um, which is obviously the decision that they've made. So he, he's, he, he's gone then? because uh, from uh, what There's I'm not an official it. statement out yet, but it's looking that way, obviously. Well, he's in Dubai. Oh, uh, this no, is before. he was in Dubai two weeks ago. Oh, this is before... This is before. He was around smugglers at the buffet. That's okay, all I so saw. He was, yeah, he didn't know. He didn't have a clue. So, so it, it, is it, it the right it, time to make a change? Well, it, in reality, the board have made a decision um, and you know, they see the future of the club going in a different direction. There's a man under contract. Uh, and Di, listen, if you sum up what Dai's done for the club, he's been phenomenal. He took over when the club were in financial ruin. Um, you know, Half an hour away from going bust. You know, There's stories of him paying the bus to take him to games paying for the tape, uh, for the players and all this stuff. And he's been part of that evolving club that's gone from real financial struggles at Wickham to every year up until the last couple of years, they've improved their league performance in terms of the end position. So, you know, when I think when he first took over, they finished 11th. There was a relegation battle with Newcastle last game of the season. A year later, a uh, much better team, uh, you know, ends up higher in the league. And it, there's a gradual improvement. Um, yeah, we get back into the Heineken Champions Cup when I was there. Uh, first year we were there, of course we did. Uh, so it was improvement then. And then, obviously, they get to uh, a Champions Cup semi-final against Saracens. A um, couple of years after that, gets the Premiership final. Should have won the Premiership. Nathan Hughes gives a penalty away with 30 seconds to go. That sh- He should never have even been trying to compete for the ball. Uh, Exeter kick the penalty to level it and then win in extra time. So... And we had a squad, we moved to Coventry, had a squad at the time with world stars like Curtly Beale, George Smith, uh, Cipriani was there, Vili LaRue, Elliot Daly. We've got all, the, all these players that were coming in that were great. And um, unfortunately, where the squad is at the minute, there's, the squad, in my opinion, is nowhere near as good as it was. And like I've said on here many times, in the Premiership, you kind of finish where you look at your squad and you go, that's a, that's a top two squad, that's a top four, that's a top six, don't you? And then that's a relegation battle squad. Um, and you know the squad uh, I think they're ninth in the league at the minute and that's the quality that he's got so sometimes you need it's like when Cockers let um, it's like when Leicester let Cockers go you know Cockers was amazing at Leicester won loads of stuff but at some point you feel you've got to go in a different direction as a board and that's what they've done and because Saracens have been relegated they've taken the decision now and said well we've got the rest of this season where we know there's no relegation so in reality, all they're competing for is top six, top four, which is massive for a club. But they're saying, actually, we're going to take a decision now and we're going to go in a different direction. So um, had Saracens not been relegated and, and everything that's happened, I don't think they'd have made this decision. That's only my opinion um, until perhaps the end of the season. Who knows? But we, we're here where we are. Wasps are ninth in the league. They've decided that die. Uh, and the club need to part ways and go in a different direction. That's where we're at. And he's done a proper job, though. Let's not. He's been brilliant. Yeah. Let's not forget, like Goody mentioned, the stuff that they've been through there, like close to relegation, uh, close to bankruptcy, um, moving up to Coventry. So the whole squad having to move their lives away from what they knew before. And he's managed all that, and he's mm-hmm. managed it unbelievably well. And uh, you know whether or not we we've laughed about it or not laughed about it or it's true or it's not true. You know whatsoever ever's happening with the finances at Wasp doesn't look great. There's no training uh, ground. They've lost their best players last, last year. And he's stuck about to see that through. So for me, there's no substitute, right, for loyalty. That's what I think. And, and there's not many people that loyal in the game. He could have jumped ship a long time ago. That I'm sure there would have been loads of opportunities he, in he's, Wales. He's had a lot of offers. Of course he has. Yeah. Of course he has. And, you know, he's a great rugby man as well. But looking at it, and I... I there's no surprise that he's gone. I just hope he's left on good terms. I'm sure he has. Yeah, I, I, I think he will. L- listen, you know, there's obviously, when you leave, uh, when you're under contract, there's going to be conversations that are tough conversations. But uh, I think over the next few days, we'll see a statement from Wasps. And, 
you know, you, you do come to an agreement. Um, and it got, Dyer's done wonderful things for that club, take them to a position where they should have won the Premiership. They've moved, like Jim said, moved to Coventry. Yeah, that is monumental what's gone on. And now the, the board um, just feel that it's, it's time for a new direction. And, and unfortunately, then you have to have tough conversations. You obviously have a, I presume, some sort of negotiation around a severance package. Um, and then, you know, you, you shake hands and, and you know, while the, there won't be bad feeling there because you want to remember Dyer for everything that, that he's done to get the club where they are now from where they were. But Do you think that's how we'll be remembered? It, it should be. It sh- if you And it's like what we said previously, you know, we, we said about Nigel Ray and stuff when he, you know, st- stood down at Saracens. He's done some wonderful things. But are you what you remember for? And I wrote a column for Rugby Pass on, on that and I said, I just hope you're not remembered for the last sort of period that you're involved in. If so you look at Walsh as well, though, it does look like their demise has come from the quality on the pitch. I remember playing against Wasps in Europe two or three years ago and their team was quality right the way through. Yep. Nathan Hughes was playing well, Nazim Carr on fire, guys like Cipriani, Gopperth playing well, Philly LaRue, Wade. Uh, and they just, when you watch them now, they still have some good players. Yep. Obviously, the Cipriana Sopawanga thing hasn't really come off for them, but they don't really seem to have that same quality, that same level of player. So it is interesting now that they've come and got rid of the coach, as if I can understand they want to go on a new path, but you look at it from the outside, and I wouldn't look at Wasps' demise, let's call it, and say that it's Dai Young's fault. They don't no, have the same quality of player. No, I, I completely agree with that. And I've said that openly. Um, and I think they've the club have come out and said they've still got space in the salary cap, um, which again leads you to think that you know they've not spent as much as perhaps other clubs. And Is that's because they couldn't spend as much? No, they can spend as much as they want. They, you know, so they had the money as, to spend as much as they as want. As a club, you look at what they've got as a club. They've got the best facility. Um, Corporate ar- hospitality. A- around... Tech. Yeah, best facility around uh, an owned stadium. So they've got a hotel there. They've got all the conferencing. Casino. And, and, and banqueting. Yeah, the casino. All this stuff, that side of the business is probably looking around. I'd say it's one of the best in, in England, if not the best in England as a entity. We're there Friday. We are there Friday. But then around that, their squad isn't. Their squad isn't the best. Let's be honest about it. Um, it's a reasonable squad, but for me, it's a mid-table squad. Whereas before, like when Cavey said he played, that was a top table squad that could have won the Premiership. They finished top of the Premiership, you know, in the, in the league rounds. Um, ended up beating Leicester, I think, in the semi final, then losing to Exeter in the final. I think that was your was that the year that you retired? Yeah, because you was, lost. To, yeah, well, you were ill, weren't you, for yeah, the semi final against it, down there, so, yeah. Saracens? Um, and and that's you know it's a fact of it. Anyone that says, look at the squ- the players in the squad that Wasps have had. And then look at the squad now and go, oh, it's just as good. You don't know your ruggers. Um, list the names, though. So I forgot about Elliot Daly. Piertau, Curtly Peel, George Smith, Cipriani, Elliot Daly, Nathan Hughes is gone. You know, Cip- the list just goes on. Joe Simpson's gone. The list goes on of all the quality that's there and gone. And people move for different reasons. This is, you know, And ultimately, as a director of rugby, your job and part of your job is formulating a squad, but you can only formulate that squad with whatever restrictions or not restrictions in Saracen's case there are. So you have, you know, ultimately, if the club isn't performing and the board want to go in a different direction, that's what happens. And you just wish Di the best. He's been brilliant for the club. He's been very good to me in my career there. Um, Everyone that speaks to him and knows about him thinks he's a good bloke around the game. There's not many people or if anyone, I don't think there's anyone that's ever come to me and had a bad word to say about Di. So... You know, unfortunately, we've seen what Cockers has done at Edinburgh. We were talking about it earlier. You know, you move on. And someone's going to get a good coach with yeah. him. He, he, he'll do a very good job. And there's rumours of him going to Ospreys. I think he'd do a wonderful job there. There was chat of him potentially being in the mix for the Wales job before Pivac got it. So, you know, you don't become a bad coach or a DOR overnight. It's just sometimes you have to part ways to improve, hopefully. 